Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Green Talks. I'm Ryan Thogmartin. That is Darren Crouch with Passages International. And, Darren, we have a, a basic topic today, but it's insanely important. You and I have talked a lot about this off camera, and it's really a topic of what is a green funeral? And there's a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of people that think they know what a green funeral is, but we're, we're not really defined, I think, in the profession and absolutely on the consumer level of understanding fully what a green funeral is. So um, that's what we're going to break down today. Uh, so let's, let's start with the basic question of what does a green funeral look like and entail? Okay, great. Well, thanks for having me again, Ryan. Um, I think before I answer that question, I just want to kind of point something out, which is, you know, we're, we're five or six conversations into this topic of green talks, and we're talking mm -hmm. now about green burial. And I think that really speaks to the breadth uh, of what green is in the funeral business. And I think it's really important that we remember that. And maybe we can come back to that later in the conversation. But, you know, a green funeral, I guess, in its, in its purest form, green burial, uh, would typically be, you know, the burial of an unembalmed body in an eco-friendly container, either like wicker, pine, simple pine, uh, cloth shroud, uh, usually a hand-dug gra hand grave, uh, very limited mechanized uh, equipment like mowers and diggers, no fertilizer at the cemetery, no headstone, no concrete vault, um, as low impact on the environment as possible. I, so I would say in its purest form, that's a green burial. Um, even though that's a green burial, you're still going to have an impact from that. You know, the only way to have a purely, purely green funeral is if somebody walks out into the woods, drops dead, and we leave them there, right? Yeah. But if we have to make a removal, refrigerate the body, transport the body to the cemetery, there's going to be an impact. And I think that's what's sure. really sure. important to remember is, you know, we want to make it as green as possible. Mm -hmm. However, we need to pay attention to what the consumer wants. So... You know, some consumers, for example, uh, it may be the grandma that just died, but the grandpa died 10 years ago and he's buried at the traditional cemetery and they have two plots. Now, the cemetery might require a vault in that traditional part of the cemetery, but they, the family may want a wicker casket, for example, or they may choose not to embalm the body. So there are ways to green the funeral without having to have the darkest shade of green. Sure. And I think that's sure. what's really important is to listen to the consumer uh, and, and find out exactly what they want. Um, sure. you know, for example, we had, we literally had a family, we're in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We had a family last week drive from San Antonio, Texas to pick up a casket from us. They drove overnight on a Thursday. They arrived on Friday morning and they drove back Friday to have a funeral on Saturday. And that speaks to how important it is for some families mm -hmm. to have this type of product. But it also speaks to well, is that green? <laughs> they drove 28 hours round trip to get a wicker casket. Now, how much gas did they burn in their suburban or whatever they came in to get that right. product? So, you know, yeah. we as a company at Passages, we don't want to judge people if they just want to dip their toe in the water. And if that just means, you know, a biodegradable urn after cremation, or if they want to go whole hog green burial, we got the full gamut of products to help families or funeral directors cater to that family. And we're not going to judge anywhere on that spectrum. I, I like it. So, I mean, it's safe to say that green is trying to minimize the environmental impact. It may, it, you're not going to totally negate all of it. And each family kind of has their own barometer of what they're comfortable with. So in that case, then what, what is the, uh, environmental impact of a traditional funeral? Well, I mean, if we look at some of the data, and some of this data might be a little bit older, um, and we're looking at, you know, 30 million board feet of timber uh, that goes into wood caskets, 90,000 tons of steel, uh, 1.6 million tons of concrete in vaults, uh, oh, wow. 800,000 gallons of embalming fluid. I mean, that's enough, I think, to fill like, I think they use the, the analogy of filling like eight Olympic sized swimming pools with formaldehyde based embalming fluid. Um, so it has an environmental impact. Um, you know, in, in America, we're lucky because it's a huge country. 
you look at other countries like the UK where it's much, much smaller and green burial is almost a necessity because they're running out of land. Um, you know, we, we, didn't, we don't talk about the land very much and we don't here in the US because we have lots of land, but in other countries, I mean, land is a premium and they can't just be, you know, can't have these sprawling cemeteries everywhere. And so right. green burial allows them to, to take land that might be a woodland or a parkland area and actually have burials of bodies or cremated remains there and you wouldn't even know it's a cemetery. So you sure. could be like walking in the woods and it just feels like you're walking on a trail. And so I think, you know, there's that, there's that environmental Im uh, impact there, but there's also that really cool feeling of, you know, being in a place that's, that's part of nature still. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And I, I remember being in Amsterdam consulting with the funeral home and they have like, 10 year graves where everything has to be biodegradable uh, because they reuse the land is limited. They reuse that, that land uh, over and over and over again for multiple families. So, um, all right, we, we touched on a little bit like that we can kind of customize what green looks like for each family. I want to hit on the arrangement though. Um, you know, we've done some other videos where your, your company is making that arrangement process a lot easier for the funeral home and doing things that are um, experience based. So how can the arrangement be green? So, you know, I'm not sure that the ag arrangement itself can be green. I think you still need to go through all the processes. I mean, if you're sitting making arrangements with families, you're going to ask whether or not they want embalming or not. If they just mm -hmm. want washing or preparation of the body without embalming. Um, in terms of shrouding the body, selecting a, a product that's more eco-friendly, having those products available for families so you don't have to put them on an airplane. This is the third day in a row that we have put a wicker casket on a Southwest Airlines flight. Wow. Six, seven hundred dollars. And it tells you the extent that people will go to. And it also talks about, well, how green is that? Um, yeah. But I think, you know, if you're not offering it in the selection room and in the arrangement process, you're missing a huge opportunity because I think data shows, I think in 2017, they did a survey and it was like 54% of families are interested in green. And as we talked about earlier in the conversation, that may not all be the darkest shade of green, yeah. but that needs to be part of the conversation. Families are experiencing and making dec green decisions in every other part of their lives. It only makes sense that when they come to a funeral home and they sit down and they make arrangements, that that is at least brought up in the conversation um, so that families have the opportunity to, um, to consider it. I think, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that, that when I talk to families or funeral directors that have helped a family do a green burial, they talk about how powerful it was and how meaningful it was. And I think uh, if a funeral director did a green funeral and saw the power of that experience for that family, they would be much more inclined to do it. And I feel like Funeral directors are nervous. It's not in their wheelhouse. It's not something they do on a regular basis. And so they have to get yeah. that familiar, familiarity with it. <laughs> um, and when they have that, then, then they're going to be much more comfortable presenting it. I think the other thing too is, I think families also realize that this is relatively new and they don't expect it to be perfect. You know, sure. they, they expect you to be open to it and be willing to help them through this process. And if everyone is learning at the same time, it's not the end of the world. You know, I think the beauty of the funeral director is they've dealt with many deceased bodies. And if something goes slightly wrong, they're there as a guide to the family to, to help them resolve those issues. And there's value in that. And I think families would much rather pay for that assurance and that expertise than pay four or five thousand dollars for a metal casket. And so that's that's where I think the the dilemma for funeral directors comes in is they're scratching their heads going, well, if I'm not selling a six or seven thousand dollar metal casket or cherry casket, where am I going to make my money? Well, you're going to make your money as being a gu as guiding families through this process. So that as the body starts to purge or some other crazy thing goes on, they're there to hold their hands and guide them through it. Well, you said something there that I, I as we wrap up, I want to touch on. You said that a funeral home or funeral director in that arrangement process has to, they need to give the option of green to the family. You and I both know that funeral directors can get in a routine and arrangement process. They go through, they say the same things, they show the same collateral. Like it, it gets so routine that breaking that routine just completely throws them for a loop. I'll never forget 
you know, rearranging a slat wall in a funeral home, one of the first sales calls I ever made and a funeral director called me ripping me because I removed something from it. I said, I didn't remove it. I just moved it. And <laughs> like they get so routine. So to that point, what do funeral directors need to know about green funerals? I, just the bare minimum. What do they need to know about green funerals? I think they need to know there's lots of products out in the market. There's lots of interest for it. They need to know that it can be very profitable and it's not a threat. It's an opportunity. Uh, and I think most families, when you present it to them, uh, are much more open uh, to it than they may think. I mean, what I hear from funeral directors a lot is nobody's asking for it. Well, no one's asking for it because most people don't know about it. It's only the people that really go out of their way to research it yeah. to find what they want. And once, you know, once you've done the burial of the cremation, if they, if they weren't able to incorporate those aspects they see value in, then you ended up with, you end up with a consumer who's not fully satisfied. So, yeah, which is where we're at. I mean, consumers aren't satisfied most of the time with what they get. Right. Right. And I think the other thing too, is not one size fits all. I mean, if, if mm -hmm. a family, like I said, wants to forego embalming, but they want to be buried in a vault, well, I mean, in a, yeah, have a vault and it's not the end of the world. You know, it's at least it's a, a step greener than it was the traditional way. Sure. Sure. I love it. Well, Darren, again, thanks for, for coming on and being a part of these. I think this is a, an important conversation because, you know, we have a consumer, like you said, 54% are interested over half of the, the, the population that's, that's dying is interested in, green burials, but it's just a conversation that isn't had and it needs to be. So uh, kudos to you and, and your team that are doing, you know, a lot of very interesting things and, and valuable things to assist funeral homes in this process and, and get them educated as well. So um, if, if funeral homes want to connect with you, they can go to passagesinternational.com as well as finding you on all the major social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, you're there, you're active, and you're putting out a lot of resourceful content that's going to help them have better conversations with the families that they're, they're serving around the topic of, of, of green funerals. So Darren, thank you so much. And uh, we'll look forward to the next episode. Thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it.